This is Sean Party Girls and Move Around. Hey, what's up? This is DJ. Hey, this is Tifa Straight out of Kingston, Jimmy. Yo, what well, is this? Red, what is this? Damian Junior Gang Mali. Hey, what's up? This is Kevin Lindley. You are now in tune to select the AJ. Island Vibe Show. It's the Island Vibe Show. Shoot it! 1055 to be this man, select the AJ Island Vibe Show. A massive, I have a special guest, that's right. International artist, bodies, hard working, talented, and I must say, beautiful people, Tifa. Tifa, what are going on? Thanks for having me. Thank it's, like, this is so long overdue. Well, trust me, it's been, a, it's been a while. I know, I know. I have a busy schedule, but your schedule is off the chain. I mean, it's like you're you're here and then you're all over the place and and just <laughs> you're, you're, you're you're traveling and things. How how are you? How are you doing? I'm tired, but I am blessed. Not to give God thanks. Yeah. Tired but blessed. That, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. First of all, I want to say first of all, congratulations on your career and all that you've done for for dancehall and Jamaica in general. But I must say. Um, you're looking beautiful. You've lost weight. I've been following you on social media, <laughs> and I saw that you you lost some weight. How much weight did you lose? I lost fifty pounds. Nice. Because to Daikal, I lost fifty pounds. Yes. Who, who's Daikal? Um, they're like a health and wellness like center. So mm -hmm. I did the whole thing. I mean, people the Ozen people, their thing is a little bit different with mm -hmm. seven glutide. So, mm -hmm. um, it was at three months, four months, and I lost. 50 pounds. Nice. So it's like, was it, it again, you say it's like something that it's taken. Did you mm -hmm. have to learn any special diet? And I mean, yes, but how they do it is like they tailor your, like the things that you like. Mm -hmm. You say you like cake. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, you can have this piece of cake because we don't want it to cheat. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But it's just in a particular proportion. So you have to weigh everything and you have to watch what you eat and your calorie intake. But you can literally, they tailor it based upon the things that you actually like to eat. So when you go to a restaurant where you have to like, Look on the calories or say, okay, I and can't you have this. Much, you kind of pretty much know, okay, then if it's a grilled chicken or it's a fried chicken or it's, you know what I mean? You, you know you're going to substitute your rice for your veggies, for your... So, and you know the particular proportion mm -hmm. based upon doing it, living this way for the particular amount of months. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice. So, when you go to Jamaica, you, you do that too. Because when you go to Jamaica, I just Why? eat it. Uh, <laughs> like that, go out the window, you can do that. That's crazy. And you go to Jamaica, kind of different. <laughs> You know, especially when you have a mother like mine, because she, she want to give you a bulla, she want to oh give you a bun, she want, like, she just want to give you all the things Ooh, that you like. It's a temptation. Exactly. <laughs> but the, the crazy part about it is she is like a health person. So mm. she does, she's into like liberty and her juices and natural this and whatever, whatever. but she will feed you. Oh my God, that's how. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I got to say, you're looking beautiful. I was following you on that's social media and I saw that and I was like, when you start looking at some older pictures of you, and I'm like, yo, she really lose weight. Mm -hmm. How long did that take to? Like three and a half, four months. There's wow. a picture there that I did like April of last year. A passport picture there that I put up. And then when you see the difference, because like, you know, when you're losing it, you're like, yeah, you see it on the scale, but like, you're not really see it because, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when I looked at the two pictures, I was like, and then when I fit into a jeans, that me and my mom literally had to like work surgery for put on the jeans. <laughs> like she literally had to help me put on the wow. pants. Wow. And then I had on the pants in the thing and I was just like, look here, like it's Wow. So, yeah, That's amazing, it. man. Mm -hmm. I mean again, congratulations on that. Thank you. All right. So we're here to let the people know who Tiffa is. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, I, can't, I mean, I know who Tiffa is. Well, sort of, which I'm going to want to know more. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm sure you're going to have some new um, people who want to know who Tiffa is. First of all, mm -hmm. you're from Jamaica. Were you born and grown there? Born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica. When I was born at St. Andrew, and Natal, they are St. Andrew. I was born at Natal Hospital, St. Oh. Andrew, Jamaica, but I, like, I grew up in Kingston. Uh -huh. 91 Duke Street downtown, and I don't know where it go. But most parents, you know, them hustle and do them thing, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Work hard, and then we move uptown. Also, you Natal, live downtown, and you went downtown. to uptown? And okay. My mom worked her ass off. Okay. And then big up to uptown. mommy. Big up to mommy, and then we move uptown. <laughs> Okay. It's weird. Can we start uptown, then go downtown, then go back uptown? Can my father was that, you know? Father the kinda. Alright. So in terms of like when you move from down to uptown, I mean, was there like anything different where people take treating you different when they were oh you you come from downtown no, or no, you just e even though even though even though I moved from downtown to uptown, mm -hmm. it's not like my parents weren't like educated people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They like my dad educated man. He's a psychologist, by mm -hmm. the way. Okay. So my dad educated man. My mother, you know what I mean? Went to partly college. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like they knew how to maneuver between the two realities and the two worlds. You know what okay. I mean? Okay. Um, you have to credit my 
dance hall now for downtown. Mm. Cause grandma knows she had a popular restaurant and bar downtown. Okay. So that is where it sounds string up round robin. You know what I mean? So Jam- that's where you get the experience. Gambling and going around and back. <laughs> You know what I'm you know what Big I mean? up grandma. Big up grandma. That was our soul. Oh. Um, and no for the like the little dance. She used to love this song. Alu never, alu ne- she can jump oh. spread out. Yeah, she oh, Okay, so yeah. okay. So, All right. <laughs> The, the reason I asked, because again I, I, again, I grew up in Jamaica, but I mean, I grew up uptown, mm-hmm. but I went to a school downtown, mm-hmm. St. George's College, right there in the heart of downtown. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when people hear, oh, you come from uptown, and then people kind of treat it different. So I was like, okay, what was, you know, who is people coming from downtown yeah. to the but uptown? But you know what it is, though? I, I love the fact that, like, especially you that grew up town, mm-hmm. that you went to a traditional high school downtown. Because it's a similar situation with me. Like, mm-hmm. people don't even understand that you being downtown and going to a George. I went to Wilmers. Wilmers oh, Prep, Wilmers High. Oh, Lord. So, <laughs> <laughs> For the people that don't know, well, Georges and Wilmers, yeah, we had our little thing. But anyway, go on. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. But it's crazy because I wouldn't change it for the world because mm-hmm. you're literally in a classroom with, for example, an Azan mm-hmm. and a Dan son. Mm, that truth. That's true. That is it true. It's literally a melting pot. Like I wouldn't have changed it for the world, and I feel like especially that type of schooling, mm-hmm. traditional high schooling, like all of what they go school downtown. Mm-hmm. We were more equipped to deal with the world because we could have deal with the downtown reality mm-hmm. and the uptown reality. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because we that's had that true. melting pot of friends and students, mm-hmm. and so yeah, I mean, it wasn't the only, the only, the only, the only, the only time I felt different was with my legs. It mm-hmm. wasn't about where I came from. It was just. My legs, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That was the only, and, and it was when I left my house. When I was at home, I was fine. But when I left my house, the only issue was legs. It wasn't up to or down to mm, Okay, okay. Um, so let's talk about the music now. How, mm-hmm. when did you eventually start music or going into the whole dance hall or reggae? How, how did you go into the whole music scene? The whole music or when scene. When did it start, I should say? How long when did it start All right, for so you? I've been doing this for way too long. Um, <laughs> But it's way too long. Way, Tifa. way, 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 Tifa, way, you're 21. way, 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 way. <laughs> so there is this, let me tell you how it really kicked off. Um, I don't know if you remember this this religious, like they had a religious play that was mm-hmm. going around mm-hmm. called Salty the Singing Songbook. And I auditioned for it, got through. Mm-hmm. So it was this big thing at the National Arena, this big thing at the stadium. And I was just like, all right. Because I already knew I, knew, I knew I could sing, my family knew I could sing and perform. I was already like in the dance troupe, the choir. Mm-hmm. But when I got that taste of, remember I know you're like, I was like probably like nine. Mm-hmm. And you're in this big national arena. I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is it. This From is it. nine. This is it. From nine. From like eight, nine. And then, um, Ashe. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with Ashe. So Ashe is a performing arts company. Mm-hmm. Um, they had auditions after that. Okay. And I auditioned and I got through and I literally spent. You were in Ashe? Yeah, I spent my entire adolescent life. Really? From like 10, 9, 10, up to like 18 when I was leaving high school at Ashe. So I toured with them, Jamaica, Caribbean, yeah. US. Like I literally have been touring since I was a kid. I didn't them. know you were in Ashe. <laughs> wow. So I'm formally trained singing, dancing, acting with these people, touring, doing like contracts from I'm like 14, like at Sandals, like leaving. My mother giving me permission to go perform. Because this was what I wanted. She's like, all right, mm-hmm. you can do this if you get good grades. Okay. So I made sure to get good grades because I wanted to perform. I wanted to go everywhere. Okay. You know what I mean? So I've been doing this from like, took a little break. Okay, you know, you, go, you know, high school. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Six farm because I went to six farm. It, it would must kind of code. Okay. Because you yeah, know, yeah. you want a little boyfriend. You want to be like a regular person. You know what I mean? You want to be a regular person. Yeah. So I took a break for a little bit, and then I started UA. Okay. And it was my boyfriend at the time. He's like, Yo, you can sing and you can do all of these things. Like, why are you not singing? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He had a little makeshift studio up at his house. We caught a demo. The demo got to somebody else. The demo got to somebody else. Um, did my first recording at, I think it was Big Ship Studios. Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, you should be doing this with your life. My cousin was like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, your mother said you go to school. Mm-hmm. You didn't even finish university. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, it was not an easy business. And I'm like, I know. So he's like, all right. I'm going I'm to let you meet my homeboy, Suko. Ah, Ward 21. Ward 21. So I was like, okay. Met Suko in a gas station, Boulevard and Mullins. <laughs> and I was like, hey, sir, I'm a face to family long time. Hey, sir, I can sing, I can DJ, I can harmonize. What's up? Mm-hmm. And he was like, you're feisty. You know, I was wow. Like, <laughs> it's like, all right, audition. 
and I literally did a formal audition. Cause I remember at that time, young. Mm -hmm. Remember at that time, them I come from like Jamie's school yeah, yeah, audition. Yeah, yeah. Prove yourself. Yeah, for proof, so you can. So I went down there and I tore it up, and the rest is history. Nice. So you, you started recording and you and you and you doing the dance hall. Where are your parents? Because I know Jamaican parents, mm -hmm. my parents, especially since when I decided, I tell them, okay, I'm going to DJ. Mm -hmm. They're Jamaican, tra traditional Jamaican parents is why you're a doctor, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So when you tell them, so you're going to be a DJ, you're going to be a, a singer, like, you know, them, were they supportive of that? Or? They were. They, really? They, yeah, she, as I tell you, my her thing was, make sure you get a degree. Make sure, mm -hmm. you a make sure you get a degree. Make sure you get a degree. Make sure you get a degree. You know so as long as you were doing good in school, they have no problem. As long as I was, doing good in school, as long as I was, you know what I mean? And then, leading out to when university was ending, mm -hmm. I had sought management because I knew that this was what I wanted to do. So I'm going to look the management. So when my dad, like, she couldn't sell me. You know what I mean? She couldn't sell me nothing. Like, mommy, I already set up this whole thing. And this is what I'm going to do. But she's very supportive. She actually paid for my, my first video. Really? Yeah. She, Big up to mommy. Because she knew, like, she knew. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. She knew that... They always believed in me when they come on to when they come on to that. Is it, would you say that when they did they have to like see like okay you did a recording and hear your song I don't know what did you were just first song played on the radio or what or you just just think they just think it was that I think because she knew as I say I remember I've been performing and touring since I was like ten years old mm -hmm. so she like they she knew, saw the they talent. knew like her and my stepdad they knew I used to sing back up for his artists okay so my stepfather know. Is was still is a producer. He's Diamond Rush Records. He's okay. the one that brought Lady Sass to the world. He managed Lady Sass oh, and brought Lady okay. Sass to the world. So I grew up around that. Like so, when they got together now, round about when I was ten, when they got together now, it just it opened up the, the dance hall, dance hall part again. You know what I mean? Wow. So I used to come home and see people in my living room, like see like Luciana at the house, like see wow. different people there. Like I used to like ride with mommy to the studio and check carrying food. You know what I mean? There are days when. We wanted to go home and we couldn't go home because mommy, I forgot Dynamics are a tough gang of press records at the time. They still was pressing records at that time. So you couldn't escape this. This was just, exactly. just, you know this I mean? was just destiny just in front of you the whole time. Yes, I was doing like backup singing for like his artists wow. and like Rebel Salute and I was doing it. But I just decided, okay, instead of doing it as the chorus, mm -hmm. Tifa wanted to do it as Tifa. No. As a soul. Okay, so. wow. So... Funny enough, I mean, you know, I started before we came and I was like, all right, let me just listen to a couple of your song then because mm -hmm. get familiar because I saw an Instagram post where you post where somebody said that Tiffany have a catalog or whatever and you posted mm -hmm. a whole bunch of songs to show you that you have a list. And I'm like, I know you have songs, but then I realized there's some songs that I don't know that you do have. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I started thinking, I'm like, this girl have a catalog. Like, you have a catalog. And then on top of that, um, I first got introduced to you when you came out with a song called Spell It. Spell it out. Spell it out. Mm -hmm. And I think it was what, 2008, 2009? Nine. Funny enough, I was doing mixtapes back then, and I remember a girl was like, oh, yeah, but this girl named Tiffa, and she, she made me hear the song, and I was like, all right, I'll put it on there. And it's like, after that is when I started hearing your music more and more. I'm mm -hmm. like, all right. But then, I pretty had music before that. So How many songs did you do before uh, Spell It? Because I thought that was your first single. No, I had, single. I had no, like, leading up. Because I remember I was recording even when I was in college, so even, even before that, we had, like, um, even on TJ Rhythm. And I said, no, what? Kitty Police. Mm -hmm. That was like a little underground hit thing. Like, everybody did love the video because remember them time the Ari and Hype TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they do the stunt when I was Catwoman and I did jump off at the roof. Really? Do... So you know my forgot to investigate. I've got to look this up now. It's still on YouTube? <laughs> yeah, there. And then after that, now I got Cranny Girl. Them girls sitting in Rhythm. Cranny Girl was right after that. So Cranny Girl was kind of the underground break real underground breakout hit because by that time now was the old video light excitement and girl used to walk and broke back in a girl face because they were seeing cranny girl as is a downtown was, talking yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it, cranny girl was like a thing and then bottom of the barrel followed up dumb girl smell like the bottom of the barrel all female with him again and then after bottom of the barrel was spell it out Spell it out, kind of solidified. So it was a song that solidified mm -hmm. everything. Wow. Because yeah. again, I thought that was the first. And then I was like, start, I'm like you, when you list it, I'm like, I never hear these songs. And then I said, It's crazy because you know what? It's spell it out. Um, Cranny Girl is actually a bigger if, you, if you're looking at the number, mm -hmm. Cranny Girl is actually a bigger song than even Spell It Out. Really? Yes. Wow. 
say, you know, I'm going to do my homework now. Because I thought, I, I'm like, I, mean, I, I was just listening. I'm like, all right, I have this oh, habit. That was like my big breakout crossover Jamaican wow. success. And I want, I want to say that's probably before social media, YouTube. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I, maybe I was up here at the time. So I probably never hear that song at, mm -hmm. at the moment. But wow. Okay. So let me ask you, I mean, in terms of um, when you perform, mm -hmm. so because now that I know that you have all these songs, <laughs> when you perform, mm -hmm. how do you know, uh, like how many songs do you normally know perform in, like when you do a, a, a show? I mean, it depends. It depends on it, like if it's a 20 minute set, maybe like. So how many songs do you fit in a 20 minute set with all the catalog you have? So, you know, sometimes you chop them up and then some people, some people like, you know, some people like request songs. I probably like, I probably like the seven or eight. Okay. You know, so if it's like a half an hour is more. If it's like five to five to hour is more. Is, it, is there any go-to one that you always make sure you have to? No, I'm to spell it out. I always mm. say spell it out. It's Jamaica's second national anthem. And which I want to admit to, you know, that song, it hurt my head the first time because I wasn't really bright in school. But, yeah, <laughs> but when me I hear the song and you spell out and you say the M-E-M, -E -E, like, let me start, I have to stop the song and make sure I get the spelling right, find out what you say, <laughs> for, say for, all right, for understand everything. But the, the song did bad, but you know, my body too bright with the spelling. So, <laughs> so you know, but, um, but yeah, so let's go into the song. The, the single now you have out now is called Say Yes, mm -hmm. all right? Um, who is it produced by? Okay, so Say Yes is produced by the Billboard King, <laughs> Kemar McGregor, um, and the Rico Pretty. Mm -hmm. So Say Yes now um, is me remembering when the girl, you remember this viral video that was going around? And the girl jumped up on the stage and she was like, Mr. Selector, you can't play some song for the girl. Then. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, we need more of those songs. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And we need more of those songs where it's not only about my coochie, my, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, we need more songs for women walk out and enjoy. Exactly. Self. Everybody now want to go in at the party and do TikTok dance. Like, <laughs> we just want to have a good time. The girl want to wind exactly. up and We just want to have a good time. And I was just like, let me, let me, let me sing a song about that. So say yes is basically my ode to all of those hardworking females, all of those women getting it, all of those women with whether or not a rubber man or not to not do nothing. That is just my ode to them to say, say yes. Things mm -hmm. are going for me. Things look good. All right, so here's my next question. You're going to lead up to a second. There's two, mm -hmm. two questions. This. First mm -hmm. of all, you, 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 are you single? Are you seeing anybody right now? I'm single right now. All right. So mm -hmm. my second question is, in the song, oh, remember, move your order. no, you're not on a ring, but that's what I, but that's what I ask because sometimes people, no, girl, I, move, I someone. moved it. No, no, no. So, the second part is in mm -hmm. the song, mm -hmm. you, you tell the girl that if the guy not send 70 grand, 70 grand, mm -hmm. block him basically. Yeah. So, my question is, if you were if, if, a, if a guy wanted to date Tiffa or see Tiffa, mm -hmm. how much? Does that guy have to make for you to even entertain it's his not argument? Even, you know what it is? It's Be not honest even, with me, It's not even make, per mm -hmm. se, because mm -hmm. ambition can carry a far away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because enough man have money or get access to money and them have ambition. Would you date somebody that work at McDonald's? Them, them, them lose it. Who knows? Tiffa, be honest with you. Would you who date knows? somebody that work at McDonald's? Who knows? Tiffa, don't be honest with me, man. <laughs> if them, who knows? My, man. Look here. My <laughs> thing is, and it's funny, I wrote a song about this. Right. My thing is, the woman them know I go hard. You know, mm -hmm. the 2020s? Mm -hmm. If you do the stats, it's women that are buying houses. It's women that are opening businesses. It's not, it's not men anymore. It's women that are doing all of these things. Because we are like, I think that the culture has been set away where most men come to their mother's struggle and mm -hmm. they feel like it's normal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you find that a lot of women are single mothers. You find that they are, are responsible for going and getting it. You got to just match my hustle. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You might not be a singer, you might not, whatever, but as long as you match my hustle and as long as I know you get up out of the bed, because me, now nah bleach by the stage at night time, protect up my money and mine, you, so match my hustle. And then we can work it out. Fair so, enough? So if anybody work at McDonald's, Tiffa, so she don't mind. Match my <laughs> hustle. Match, and it's not, it's, it's, it's not even that, you know. Mm -hmm. I suppose you're working at McDonald's, but you're working there to complete your master's. Okay. But it make a minimum wage though, I mean. To complete your master's. Yeah, by the mean, eh? I like nice things. I'm not even gonna front. I do like nice things. Um I But you know why I asked that question though? Because I, I, I do I've been like seeing to travel. I do like so The reason why I asked that because I've been seeing videos online where girls are like saying, Oh, the guy have to make at least hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. No, you know, 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 you
everybody have the horror stories, especially now. These men are so sensitive and like they, they want you to give them flowers. Mm. Everybody have them horror stories. I think it's just easier for women. Like, okay, at least if I get my heart broken, I'm I'm crying in the BMW or oh. I'm crying on a plane or I'm crying in Louis Vuitton. Okay. You All know right. what I mean? I at, got at least we can say. <laughs> We get something outside. Can enough woman go through the butter bruising and the disrespect, and then they get nothing outside. So okay. fear is fear. Fear is fear. All right. So she's high maintenance, but she don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I work hard to be high maintenance. So I say you got to match my hustle. Yeah. Right. So Tifa, so what? What's next? What's going on with you now? I mean, um, are you are you planning on doing like an album? Yes. Yeah. I literally went to but, the studio last night. I really? literally I am supposed to go to a wedding. I'm leave the wedding. I'm going back to the studio. And then I have a series of shows. Um, I go back to Jamaica. I do an appearance for a corporate company that I have somewhat of a new endorsement with, but you guys will see that next mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have Sashi coming up, which is major. Um, for those of you not familiar with Sashi, um, they used to bring all of the major international acts to Jamaica like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So now they've, you know, they've returned. And I'm a part of the lineup with Buster Rhymes, Keisha Cole, Neo, nice. um, Valiant, Craft, every hot young person. Um, so I do that. I do something for the Clarion, um, Clarion Municipal Corporation. Um, I have a surprise on June 1. We just confirmed that. Okay, you hear that here first, June 1. So you make the announcement um, here. <laughs> yeah, I'll be on a mega big show in New York for around about the Ju July. The, Labor, um, what do you call it? Labor Day. Yeah, Jamaican, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Labor Day week. Yeah, Labor Day. Yeah. Um, Memorial Day weekend. No, man. No? Fourth of July? Fourth of July okay. weekend. <laughs> Independence weekend. So I'm on a major, major show in New York. Then, um, yes, yeah, so I just endorsements, shows, recording. God is good. You know what I mean? To be doing this, this long and mm -hmm. still being relevant this long and still... Yeah, that's a do tifa. That's just keep hustling, man. Yeah. Which I, I love that about you. And again, you, you've been you've been hustling, and then I like that. And I think it's gonna take. You're gonna see it pay off, which it is paying off. But just keep doing it. And yeah. I don't know why I almost forgot to even mention the people that you're on um, Kabaka Pyramids album, mm -hmm. which won the Grammy last year. Mm -hmm. um, how did that feel to be on a part of a project that? Won a Grammy for Best Reggae Album. Big up my certificates. What? The Grammy Award of -E -E <laughs> um, Big up to Kabaka and Kabaka's whole team, gang. Um, mm -hmm. It's an awesome feeling, you know what I mean? Um, who who approached? Did he approach you for, the, for, the, for that project? Funny story. Mm -hmm. So Kabaka used to come to Yui. Okay, yeah. really? So I've known him from then. Um, and we were all here in the pandemic. Florida was the only place that was open. Mm -hmm. He's like, yo, let's, you know, let's link up. Let's do lunch, whatever. Right I'm like, all right, cool. Lunch, chit chat, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, yo, you know, I'm working on this album. You know, you should come to the studio, come here a couple of tracks. And I'm like, all right, cool. Sends me the address. I'm driving. I'm like, why, 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 why is this an hour? <laughs> like, why is this, this far? Like, where am I going? Get there only to realize it's gang studio. Oh. Um, I mean, I've met Gang before, but not in like that setting. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he plays some of the stuff, love it. Gang plays some stuff, love it. He's like, yo, you'd have had anything. I'm like, yeah, sure. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Of course, it, it's me and my sister as the only girls there. Cause you know they drive far. Mm -hmm. My sister are the only girls there. And then that, that night in particular, it was Kabaka, Gang, um, Gang's people that play. Like you know they play the live instruments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was busy. It was Jamiri. It was Jamiri's dad. It was wow. Gramps. It was um. Yeah, melting pot of people were there that night. And I'm like, all right, you want to do a song? I got to show out. As the only girl in the place. All right, I got to show out who Tifa is. Wow. So they played that particular track. Mm -hmm. I found the chorus on the spot. And the rest is issue. We wrote, recorded the song that same night. Nice. You, and you write all your songs, right? I mean, I like... I write 96% of my songs. Okay. Wow. And I'm going to tell you, like, that, that song was a nice song. I mean, I, I played it a lot when I first heard it. And I was like, yeah, man you know find it but again i'm glad that you're on that project i mean mm -hmm. i hope that whole grammy thing just rub off on you and then you know sprinkle 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 because <laughs> <laughs> trust me you, you again you're working hard and i love the hustle and i, and I think, think you, you you put in your work you put in the work so i think you deserve it um so again like you say you're working on probably you can give me any names or anything that you work anybody you're working with other than I mean, like um, producers are artists. Producers extensively right now with, with, with 
Kemar McGregor, but there are other there are other producers out there that I'm working with. Mm. Um, look out for a major collab. That's all I can say. Look out for other collabs. Wait, wait, who? A major collab. Wait, wait, wait. Um, look out for. I also have a collab coming out with. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but Enhance. He's like one of the big, like, mm-hmm. one of the upcoming ones that's coming now. Big up mm. to Enhance. I did a remix on one of his songs for him. Okay. So that's pretty dope. Um, yeah, that's all I can tell you right now. More endorsements. Major collab. Might get an ah. album. Good year work. So, well, if I go follow you, forget all of this information. I'm going to and tell him. I'm going to pinch and say, so, 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 so give the people um, your, your, your social media handle so they can follow you, you know, man, and let them know where social you can find you. Social media handle, at it's the Tifa, at I-T-S-T-H-E-T-I-F-A. Spell it out for you. Cross the board. At it's the Tifa. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, at it's the Tifa. Nice, nice. But Tifa, I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to even come and talk to the club me. Oh, but I really appreciate oh, Trust please. me, it's overdue. <laughs> and, and trust me, it's been a pleasure just talking to you and getting to know you. I mean, I've, I've learned a lot today mm-hmm. that I didn't know. Um, and again, I'm going to be chanting for you. The, the, I, want, I want to ask for one favor, though. Talk All right? To talk to me. You see when you win that Grammy? Mm-hmm. Does get to say big up AJ. You never say select the AJ. You never say where we're from. Just say big up AJ. That alone don't put a smile on my face. That's all I may ask I'm you. Say, you can do that for me. Just, from set, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna do it. All right, Pinky promise. Pinky promise. All right, you're gonna see it here, so all right. Anyway, Tifa, appreciate it again. Again, thank I you. wish you nothing but you, success you, and, and more success and Same more. Thing. All right, and again. We're going to, when you, when I want you to come back and we're going to talk some more because I know you got to have more. As you can say, you have more things. More so, stuff to talk about. So we're going to, we're going to be doing most this again. Def- most the- definitely. And I want to say, people, thank you for the love and say yes. We yes. have been added to over, I think, 50, 50 major stations. It's That's- been playlisted. So... My question, we're going to go on with it now. And keep requesting it on 105 for the B because we're, mm-hmm. we're playing it and we're giving nothing but support. I'm big up the camera and Dave Kelly, the originator of the original rhythm. Bon- oh, yeah, the, the bounce, bounce rhythm. rhythm. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, that's right. That is right. All right. Well, again, thank you again. And again, we're, we're going to be we're gonna be talking again. So this is this, this until next time. All right. Again, one love, peace. 105 for the beat. Island vibes.